this drill in particular, you know, I've tried it myself with my own game as well, a hundred variations of how to shift the hips forward, right? Shift weight, how do I shift weight? How do I push the hips forward? Mm. And this is one of the few that to me is really tested and tried and true, mm. you know? Thanks for tuning in guys, Kerry Gray here on the range today at the Osprey Point Golf Club in Boca Raton at the Don Law Golf Academy. I'm standing next to Eric Corgono, one of the most prolific YouTube golf instructors out there. He's got a whole bunch of fantastic content that matches up nicely what I have on my channel as well. So I'm excited to get stuck in with a bunch of different topics. We're gonna to go and have a little bit of back and forth about some of the, the most exciting principles that we implement into our teaching that has achieved the greatest results. Eric. Thanks for coming along, mate. Yeah, absolutely. Looking forward to it. Let's get stuck in. So today I'm going to tell you a little story about a lesson that I gave recently with this gentleman's drill that I saw on his channel that was really designed to get the hip motion forward, mm. right? So the guy I was giving a lesson to was really struggling with contact. Some of the guys we'd see all the time, right? Oh, yeah. Struggling with contact, a little bit of a higher handicap, club path a little left, right? Get some pulls and fades. Mm -hmm. And so we were watching his swing on video, mm. right? And we, I pulled up another pro, you know, on their look at. And if you take, take your setup there for a second. Yeah, sure. When you take your setup, I drew a line right here up from his, let's say the pinky toe. So the pinky toe of the foot kind of straight up. Mm -hmm. And if we go to the top of the back swing. And the, so this line's up here, which is this stick, right? The stick motion. Yep. And when we looked at the pros, right? They closed the gap there pretty darn quick in yeah, transition. And let's just refer back to at what time that actually takes place, right? Yeah. So we see that so many players will then load up without any sort of recentering, and then they've got to do so much work to get back over. Yeah, there. for sure. So if we can try and get to that position that as we're getting back into that lead arm parallel, we've already actually shifted our pressure back towards our lead foot, closing that up. Yeah. Getting a little bit of rotation and that pressure shift. And and like most all of the good players we see have that same motion, right? There could be some piece of the golf swing grip is different, maybe they're set up a little mm. different, but they kind of all have a pretty similar shifting pattern. Yeah. And the, what you just described there, right, that the guy, I was showing him Adam Scott, we'll show some of them on the screen, yeah. really easy to see that he closes the gap. And this gentleman I had, if we go up to the top one more time, I'm sure you see a lot of the same thing. Oh yeah. Let's say there's, you know, a grip of space here, yeah. for example. He didn't close that gap at all in transition, right? Yeah. So pure turn, no shift. Yeah, and we see a lot of this, right? It's like that upper body driven motion yeah. with the hips actually in space. If we were using this as a reference here, that that lead hip to a degree actually moves back. Yeah. And then we get the old grandpa finish coming through in this fashion. <laughs> yeah. Rather than with the professional, we would see that recentering, shift of pressure, and then the explosion into the finished position, just demonstrating with the pelvis up against the stick there. Yeah, and like every one of them, right? Mm. And if there's something that you or I want to get good at, or if you're watching, you want to get better at hitting the ball solid, you want to model success. Oh yeah. You have a hard time finding a really good ball striker who wouldn't get the belt buckle pushing against that stick, right? Yeah, absolutely. So we're going to go into in a little bit here the practice that this gentleman left with, but if we can refer to this setup and kind of talk them through, hey, how is this stick set up? What is our intention here? What are we trying to do? What are the benefits of this? So I think this is pretty similar to the video I saw that you did mm -hmm. right, with the stick in front. Mm -hmm. So if someone wants to practice this, they want to learn how to get the solid contact, right? Keep the club path from inside. How do we set this thing up first things first? Yeah, well, I think if we uh, reverse engineer it back from impact and we see where the professional golfer will generally be relative to the recreational is that we'll see that from the top of the swing in space, the hips would generally be back, which mass and pressure. So where their body is in space relative to our starting position and also their weight distribution, right? Won't be far enough forward and they'll tend to stay back and behind and that shifts the low point too far back. Yep. So what we see with the professional golfer would generally be this recentering move, which will get the low point forward, giving you that compression and power. So a great exercise, I use this with a whole bunch of players, no matter their skill level, is because to a degree, regardless of what level that you're playing at, we see even professionals get to a stage where they're actually not getting far enough forward. For right? sure. They might be leaning back or too much right side bend for the right hander. And that just really affects their ability to create consistent contact. Yeah. So starting off here, I usually get a, and we just use this as a simple reference, is we just get a grip length outside our lead hip, I like right, it. relative to what you're doing. Uh, now, 
sometimes, yeah, using foot flare, I have quite significant foot flare. Some players are a little bit more square on relative to what they're trying to achieve in their swing or levels of mobility coming through into it. So I like to just use a grip length, like you stated before, about the pinky toe. Got it. We don't need to be too specific. Somewhere, somewhere in that range. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And then what I would just generally get players to do would be a bit of a dry drill of just where they're doing tiny swings, swinging back to about club shaft parallel, and then moving through also into this abbreviated finish, feeling like the pelvis is tucked. Now when we're doing that, feeling like the glutes are squeezed, and the chest is also feeling tall, because it's quite easy to get into this position. You're stabbing yourself. Stabbing yourself. Right? <laughs> yeah. Blood bath on the range, which yeah. we don't want. So a little halfer, and then coming through, tucking the pelvis, squeezing the glutes, feels powerful, right? Yeah. And what, so when you're doing that, and let's pinpoint low point mm. and club path. Yeah, great. So what effects would, would be, have doing this better have on those two pieces? Yeah, well, the easiest way to demonstrate this is if we just snapshot impact, which first of all, there's a bit of misconception with the general golfing population that impact is the same as setup. How often yeah. do you hear that? Yeah. So giving you an understanding that every professional golfer within reason would have an element of hips forward, rotation, handle usually slightly up, right? Yeah, for sure. Lead wrist a little bit more flexed yep. relative to where it started. And they would find themselves into this position. Now, there's varying amounts of that. Yep. But if we think about the optimal club path delivery, and let's just say that it's zero in this instance. So our club path at the moment of impact is going to be zero, which will be down this yellow alignment rod that we've got here. That if I simply just move my body in space, right, and we just slowly start swinging where that golf club would be coming into impact, you can see that would have some sort of inside path, meeting the ball and then arcing back around. Yep. But then what we see with a lot of recreational golfers is in space, their hips might be more back right? The mass and the pressure will be behind. So by the time that club then ever so slightly starts moving into the ball, well, it starts creating this arcing motion moving back around. Yeah. Before we know it, the actual club path is moving left. So then as we do that, what we'll notice is that that same club path, which may have been coming on line with the target relative to, let's just call that zero at the moment of impact, the more we shift our mass and our pressure back, all of a sudden that club begins to start arcing back inside the golf ball line. Yep. So the golf club is effectively moving in this direction here. Yeah. Now, as soon as we do that, well, now the path is left and then the face is going to be way out of position. Yeah. Well, you, so how, how do I know if my hips are back, right? Well, you always record, you want to record yourself. Oh yeah. Um, but it, what would be some telltale signs that Karaj just said is your club path would be more left, mm -hmm. right? So you would get some more pulls to the left, you get some more fades to the right, depending upon the face. Mm. And all else equal, the low point would be would be more back when the hips are more back, right? Correct. And so some fats and thins. Yeah. And so that's exactly what, like I said, that gentleman that I had come in, and we see this all the time online, I'm sure the same, the same sort of pieces. And so this drill in particular, you know, I've tried it myself with my own game as well, a hundred variations of how to shift the hips forward, right? Shift weight, how do I shift weight? How do I push the hips forward? Mm. And this is one of the few that to me is really tested and tried and true, mm. you know? And so if I can, let's let's switch uh, flip flop spots for a sec. When I was working um, with him, and I'm gonna keep his name out of this on purpose, same exact similar process what you said, right? It's yeah. like, I'm gonna take the ball out, yeah. first things first. And, and he, even with him, what we did is we didn't even do a backswing. Yeah, okay. Right? I'm sure you've done some of this the same too. Yeah, sure. Is like, if I just put a club here, here's my belt buckle. This is what we were talking about. Here's the stick, yeah? Mm -hmm. I want to get my belt buckle to hit this stick on the way through. Yeah. And for him, I was walking through like, hey, for me to get my belt buckle to hit that stick, I need a couple of things to happen. I need to move my belt buckle forward. I need to turn my belt buckle and I need to extend my belt buckle. Correct, right? correct. And as we were talking off camera, like that's what we want everyone to do yeah. at the end of the day in a perfect swing. But for the player who has their hips more back, mm. would you isolate in the beginning, mm. like, hey, let's just focus on getting my lead side there, yeah. first things first. And, and they're, they're probably gonna turn anyway. Yeah, but, correct. But then we can focus on the other two elements. Is that fair? Yeah, absolutely. So if I jump in there, what I would, generally get with the players that weren't used to having their hips forward because they're, they're not used to having so much pressure over this lead side yeah. at the moment of impact. 
I would actually just get them to start off doing some exaggeration drills where they isolate completely the hip movement first yeah. and then bring in the club through. Like it. Right? So yeah. in transition, we would have a reflexing of the knees and then as the pelvis would extend, the legs would extend. Yeah. But if we were just talking about how does it feel different to get the hips in a position where they're more forward at the moment of impact to the point where the more you push them forward, and this is why I like having a lead, a lead foot that's flared here, is that encourages that left hip for the right-hander to move out of the way, yeah. allowing the pelvis to tuck into this position because we'll see too many players try and move the club before the body. Yep, big time. Right? So if we can just get the feeling that we're squeezing some pressure underneath the lead foot, I like to feel it in that left ball of the foot there, squeezing that up almost the line in which my foot is flared, which will then allow me to get into a position where my hips are tucked. Can we, let's do that one more time. I just want to point out two, two little pieces here. Sure. If you can just do the demonstration of going from setup into the follow through. Mm -hmm. So notice when he does this, if I just put a line down the top of the head, yeah. So notice the hips and the weight are pushing forward, but that headline doesn't go forward with it, right? Until he gets, he can go forward up until he gets to his full finish. But as we're going into these practice pieces into this sort of arms parallel and the follow through, let's do that one more time. So if he, and let's just go from setup to impact. So watch from here too, the head motion stays where it is, but the hips and the pelvis are pushing forward and turning. Oh yeah. If you haven't done that before, that little feel that we're kind of like glossing over because we've done this a gazillion times, <laughs> should feel wild. Like mm. to get that to look correct on video. I remember the first time I did that, right? And I looked at my video, dude, my hips felt like unbelievably yeah. pushed forward when they were too far back. So I think that's an important point, right? Mm -hmm. With this guy that I had too, I would do the exact same thing. And I think if you were given a lesson, we had a gentleman in front, we'd be like, dude, more forward, more forward, more forward. And they're gonna be like, I feel like I'm doing, we're like, no, more forward, more forward, yeah. right? Yeah. And so, and if we could do one more of those into that follow through position, exaggeration is gonna be key here. The head staying back is gonna be key. And then notice when he gets into this like roughly arms parallel position from down the line, still tilted over. Mm. Right, so his shoulders are tilted, his torso is tilted. Big thing you have to watch when you're coming through here is I'll see this all day. But we usually see that, mainly because as they're trying to shift their pressure forward, their body and their upper body is also driving at the same point. Yeah, they're used to that. Yeah, correct. Very level shoulders, yeah. no tilt in the way through. And so I think like, man, we could go over a hundred things that, that he's demonstrating so perfect here. I just think as they're pushing this forward, right? And the arms are extended, mm. we got a little bit of tilt over to the right. Like, gosh, if we could mirror some of those, those motions. Mm. I mean, if I push the hips to the stick correctly, I'm gonna get a lot I'm gonna get a lot for free. Yeah. I'm gonna get a lot good. Yeah. But yeah. I still, you know, I still like the little bit of the side bend still in there. The arms are extended away. I, I often hear with players that I'm working on this with is the very first couple of times, and I don't mind if they over exaggerate it, and they'll kind of go through and they'll fall over. I don't mind that at the beginning. Yeah, right? okay. Because at least they're going forward. Yeah. But then I would usually put a club up against their head. So I'll get you to put your grip up against my ear line here, and I'll just go, okay, let's do a little halfer chipping it down in this position. Now, the one thing that they always say is they lost the ball. They don't know where the ball went yeah. because they're actually not used to seeing their eye line tilted. Right. Yeah. Like this. It's like I'm looking at a horizontal. Yeah, What's exactly. That feels yeah. weird. I'm going to fall over. Yeah. Well, it's just the same as any sport or any skill that you do for the first time. Yeah. It just feels wildly different. That's why filming yourself, getting some sort of feedback and especially in most of my coaching, I'll use alignment sticks in some variation because nearly every player's got them. Yeah, it's easy. Yeah, it's so easy. you get that feedback. And I think you know when you're doing it correct outside of the video pieces, like the purpose of this should be better contact, path a little less outside in, more neutral. Correct. So you, when you're doing the motions correctly, you should see the, it should feel solid in terms of contact when you're getting it. Mm -hmm. The ball should be launching a little higher very oh, yeah. likely than normal. And it should be more towards like a straightish or drawish shot relative to where you're coming from. Of course, you could have a, a jacked up grip in the face of like there's other variables, mm. but all else equal, the more you would do those motions, more power, higher, farther, which I guess is more power, yeah. and then more of a draw biased. Yeah. The most you do. Now the least you would do it, right? So let me hop in there one more time. The least I would do this, if I was a player who just got the rotation piece with no with, with no um, pushing forward, I would expect to hit the ball the lowest, pulls left, yeah. and, then, and then the over fades to the right. And I'm telling you, watch these pictures we put up here and check it and watch your favorite players. 
what we're looking 